Hello friends and welcome back to the Passionpreneur series. I'm so excited that you're back with us for another interview. Today I have Lauren Allen. Now Lauren and I go back a while, <laughs> several I, years now. <laughs> yeah, I, I think this summer is going to go on like four years. So oh, yeah, goodness. I can't and believe it. It's crazy. And we've both seen each other through highs and lows and so many different ventures, starting businesses, finishing businesses, starting new ones, projects, you name it. And for me, Lauren has been an inspiration because she took an idea that all of us entrepreneurs at one point in time have thought about. If you've had a full-time job, a corporate job, just a regular J-O-B, you've had that thought, what if, <laughs> what if I leave that to go into my side hustle or this other idea full-time? Can I make it? Is it enough? Is this what people want? All the different questions that we ask ourselves, even when you're in it on a daily basis. And I love that, Lauren, you literally created a whole brand around yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I was that like, when so you put it like that. <laughs> amazing. Like, I, I, yeah. to me, I, this should be even bigger than it already is. And I know it's going to be because it's such a huge conversation. And the people that you've had on your show that you've interviewed, their stories are amazing. I mean, just from where I sit, I can only imagine for you how much you've learned and grown as an entrepreneur in your own business from right hand coaching, business coaching, from even before project managing, like where you're going to go next, having heard all these stories, what people have gone through, how they've excelled past it, past the fear and what they're doing now just to show that it's possible. Yeah. So, okay, enough about that. I'm, I'm like, <laughs> You are an inspiration yeah. and I love what you're doing Thank you. and I'm so excited to have you on this show because one, to get corporate school dropout out there to even more people, but two, I really want to hear from you like what this has meant for you in your life and your business. So if you can give us some backstory on who you are yeah. and then we'll dive into the corporate. Oh, awesome. Thank you so much, Brandy. It's been so amazing to one, be in your company for the last four years. It's been, um, I met Brandy basically on day one of wanting to start my business and, um, I wouldn't have started my business without her, uh, networking and without the mm -hmm. community that she was creating and that I got to be a part of. So thank you so much for what you did, um, and helping me see my dreams. So, um, geez, Louise. <laughs> I know this was scripted. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, I just, when somebody believes in you and then gives you the opportunity to say, here's what I can do to help. Like, I hope that people hear corporate school drop out and say, can say thank you and can, whew, and, uh, I hope that I'm making that impact on people too. Um, so a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Lauren and I created Right Hand Business Coach almost four years ago, but I didn't drop out to create a business or to create a podcast. I just wanted a different life and I had decided that I wanted to move to San Diego and the company that I worked with did not operate in California. So it was an easy way to say like, well, I'm just not going to keep the job. I'm going to quit. So I quit my job, sold my house, and moved to San Diego and just started exploring what it meant um, for like my next journey in life. I started meeting these really amazing entrepreneurs and pretty much said, well, if all these people around me are doing it, then I must, I must be able to do this. And that's really how Right Hand Business Coach got started. Like it just started unfolding. The people that I met were put into my path and it just snowballed. And by, let's see, I met you probably in May. And by July, I had fully created and created the LLC and launched Right Hand Business Coach. So at first, I didn't really know what Right Hand Business Coach was going to be. And I really just kind of struggled like all entrepreneurs of like, who did I want to coach? What was I going to do within my business coaching? Um, took me about a year to narrow it down that my passion and who I identified with the most 
were women who were just like me, who knew that there was something greater in the world and knew that they could no longer sit in their corporate jobs or their desk and just push papers and go to the meetings. And like, it just was so unfulfilling for me. I talk about it a lot where I would um, drive around my parking garage in circles, go like up and down like four flights of a parking garage, just because I had to like listen to one more pump up song before I could walk in the door every day. And I've heard people say, you know, that was me, but I was crying. I was like, sometimes there were tears too. Um, but I just knew that there was something more to life. And so I refocused completely with Right Hand Business Coach to only work with women who are ready to start their businesses and to create that option. So when they were, when they were comfortable, they could decide to drop out. Um, corporate school dropout, the podcast came because I started calling myself that and just was funny. Like it was just, it was just supposed to be funny. It was like, ha ha ha, I'm a corporate school dropout, la 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 la. And, um, but it had always been a dream of mine to have a podcast, but I didn't know what I was ever going to talk about. Like I, I was a project manager sitting in a corporate desk who wanted to hear from me and what was my platform. And so when I finally decided what niche kind of that I was going to go in with my business coaching, I started, was calling myself the corporate school dropout. And then all of a sudden, it was like a light bulb went off. And I was like, this is it. This is my platform. This is what I'm going to do for my podcast. I had a road trip that following like Friday. I had to drive all the way up to um, Malibu. And I spent, let's see probably five or six hours in traffic. And by the time I got to Malibu, the business plan was complete. Like I knew I had the strategy, like what I wanted to talk about, the interview style, like everything that, um, everything that I wanted corporate school dropout to be like came to me on that like daydream all the way up to Malibu. So I came back and just, um, it took me a while to launch, but yeah, I am so proud of, I'm so proud of myself. I'm so proud of the people that have like shared their stories and been vulnerable and willing to step outside the box. And it's like my goal in life, like I said earlier, to make that kind of impact um, on other people. Well, you're doing it. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay. I've heard, you know, I've heard people say in, in the shower, they came up with this, this yeah. entire business plan or in a dream. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On a yeah. Road, that's a new one, but I love that. I mean, it can literally, if you, can, you get that time to get focused in on it, it completely can open up for you. Yeah. Um, I just started listening to Untamed, um, uh, by Glennon Doyle this morning. Cause okay. I, uh, and she just talked about like when you're in the shower, and uh, there's nothing else for you to do. And you get to finally listen to your brain. Yeah. And I can't tell you how many great ideas. Well, they're not all great ideas, but I can't tell you how much creativity happens <laughs> in the shower. And I often talk about daydreaming. I'm a huge daydreamer. Um, and I love road trips. And like, I get so excited about road trips because I get the opportunity to daydream. And that is like my favorite thing in the world. And I like to take my road trips alone because I don't need anybody to interrupt my daydream. Um, so yeah, that's like when I, when I know that I'm going to, and need some time, I like plan out, like I need some daydreaming time. So. Nice. So during this quarantine season that we're in right now, <laughs> are you finding lots of time to daydream? Um, <laughs> Yes and no. Um, I think it impacts us all very differently. So um, I would say, let's see, we're going into week six, probably the first four and a half were, were a struggle for me. Um, I'm very um, introverted, but also very empathic. And so I was feeling the world struggles. And it took me, pro like I said, it took me probably about four and a half weeks to finally kind of get back into myself and to get creative again. And that was um, kind of late last week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I it finally. It does, you know. Say that again. I'm sorry. It, it, it's affecting us all so differently. And it just, yeah. you know, the, 
either I feel like we we start off strong because we're just trying to keep up with the flow and not focus on what's going on, or we just take all of what's going on so impactfully. And then it takes us a minute to kind of figure out, okay, here's the balance. Okay, here's how I'm going to operate now for as long as I need to. Yeah. Um, I kept thinking that I needed to be like, I needed to be stronger. I needed to do this. I need to do that for my business. And yes, I still showed up every day the best that I could. But the best I could was kind of like my C game. And I was like, this is all I can do right now. And to be okay with my C game for as long as it was going to take me. So I'm at like a B plus right now. I'm all right with that. (laughs) That's all that matters. Yeah. That's all that matters. So I'd love to dive into a little bit of, you know, knowing where you are and accepting where you are right now. B game. That's totally Mm -hmm. cool. Is that something that you have learned over time or something you've picked up through the guest that you've had on your show, your podcast? Um, I would absolutely say it was through over time of learning kind of like the ins and outs of entrepreneurship, like sitting in your corporate desk. I never knew that I, I actually didn't know that I was introverted. I just thought I was a bad employee, honestly. And I talk about that. Um, I didn't know that I couldn't hack like a full day of work plus the happy hour plus the dinner that I had to have with all of my coworkers. I didn't know that I couldn't make it that whole day without feeling so drained because I was introverted. Like, interesting. I, I had no idea. I just, I, like I said, I really thought I was just a bad employee and I really struggled with it. And I couldn't, I couldn't voice the problem either because I didn't know why I was so exhausted. And so through a lot of self journey and struggle, I finally started learning that like being introverted wasn't a negative character trait and started that journey of like, okay, what does mindset look like for me? What are the limiting beliefs that I have? Like I'd never heard limiting beliefs like as a verb before, like that just wasn't something that I heard in corporate. So it took kind of learning the whole other world outside of what I knew um, to finally say like today, like I'm a B plus. Um, yes, I have learned a ton from the, the episodes and I feel this little bit of like blessing that I listen to the episodes before they get released. Cause I feel like I get to hold it in by myself for like one more hour. Um, <laughs> And so I like to think about that of like, this is my time with my voice, with my guest. And um, I I get so inspired all over again, like every time. It makes me feel good to do what I do. I love that. I love that. Um, Where else do you find inspiration? I mean, you, you personally have done a lot of work on yourself, personal development, mindset training. Where else do you look for inspiration? Um, oh, I think you asked me like, who else do I look for in the questionnaire? And there were, none of them are like business coaches. Like, I think, well, I was thinking about this morning. I was like, you know what? I don't have, there are amazing business coaches out there. And I feel like they all kind of have a, um, they all have something very important to say, but they can, um, get overwhelming if you're listening to everybody at the same time. So for me, I personally, I love the coach that I'm using right now. So I really follow her guidance. Um, and then I, I try to push all the other stuff that I hear, which is, uh, it's called noise in the communication world. I try to push all the other noise aside to make sure that I'm kind of following, um, a strategic plan that aligns with me and aligns with kind of the, the way I work and the way that I, um, the way that I want to move forward. Um, but everything else when it comes outside of, well, even with business, everything else, everything else is all like Brene Brown, um, Glennon Doyle, Gabby Bernstein, like all of these kind of thought leaders and influencers on like mindfulness. Um, Marianne Williams, like I love all the stuff that they put out because Business doesn't have to be inspirational from like a business coach or business guru. You can find inspiration in anything. Um, so I choose to listen to a lot of different um, voices when it comes to like the, the mindset and the challenges and, um, and finding inspiration. I love that. I love the fact that you have a coach 
I mean, you are a coach and you have a coach. <laughs> uh, task number one is to find a coach when you are an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah. Huge. So a lot of the audience watching this series, they are fairly new to the entrepreneurial game. They might mm -hmm. be one to two years in, have their own business, and some are still in that thinking phase of like, is this something I really want to venture wholeheartedly into? Mm -hmm. If you could speak to them, to one of those people, what would be, say, two or three action steps you, could, you would give them as far as just taking that leap, getting started? Um. I always say one, you have to believe in yourself, like wholeheartedly, unconditionally, like know that your gut intuition is right. So if you feel that there is something else out there for you, there is, and there absolutely can be, but you have to trust what's inside first. Um, kind of the next step is to make a plan. Whatever your planning style is, it doesn't have to be a project plan like my plans would be, um, but create some sort of kind of guidance for yourself. Um, I like to kind of bucket things. So say you need to take a look at your finances. Well, write finances on the top of a piece of paper and go through and list out all of, maybe all of your, your credit cards, your debts, all of your expenses and make a plan for like, do I want to pay this stuff off now? Or do I um, have enough cushion not to worry about this? Um, where are your relationships? What sort of conversations do you need to have? Um, what sort of support systems do you need to have? So I would again, like make a bucket and say support systems. Like who are you going to go to when you have um, a bad day? Like, is it a family member or is it, um, another fellow entrepreneur, because those can be very different um, support systems. So you need to make sure that you have one that you trust and that you go to for guidance um, in your business and in your personal life. So I would say, what is that? Finances, support system, action plan. Mm -hmm. um, and then when fear says, maybe I shouldn't do all this, take whatever is on your action plan and take that next step because fear is always going to be there, but you have the control to take the next step. Every time fear kind of just like wants to grab you and pull you back down. So always take that next step. Oh, that is huge. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have to practice this myself. I absolutely have to go, okay, what's the next step? And just flip and do it. I don't want to cuss, but I just want to be like, ah, it's so freaking scary. And I talked to my coach about like, when I am like pushing the boundary, I get really nauseous. So if I'm getting really nauseous and feeling very like anxious, I know that I'm pushing the envelope for myself and I just, I just do it anyway. I just do it anyway. I yeah. like how self-aware you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, I also always say that my emotional intelligence did not come for free. <laughs> that was a lot of therapy and a lot of books and a lot of learning and yeah. So that's so important though. I mean, as, 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 a, as someone who I feel like I was, I grew up in the entrepreneurial household. Like my mom was a single mom and as long as I've known her, she's always had her own business and they've been different businesses over the years, but I grew up seeing that I grew up, you know, having friends whose parents were entrepreneurs, but they did such a good job of just every day, just doing it that mm -hmm. when I started my own journey with it and I had those days where I'm like, I just don't know if I can show up. Yeah. I don't know if I can do this. I was almost afraid to talk to them because I felt like, well, they obviously have some gene that I don't have, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. right? Yeah. But what I've learned by, like what you're saying, having that community, which is so important, mm -hmm. having those support systems, having a coach, having other people to talk to and bounce ideas off was that that's just part of it. I mean, yeah. one of the, the best things my coach has told me, and I, I say this every single morning, it's like, I make a commitment every day to do something in my business. That mm -hmm. is me moving forward. But every single day, it's a recommitment. Yeah. 
that that's the only way I can look at it. <laughs> yeah. Um, I stole this from somebody else. Um, but she said, it's like self-love. Like, do I love my business enough to show up for it today? And she also used the, do I love myself enough to like brush my teeth every evening and to wash my face every night? And I still have to do that sometimes. <laughs> I'm like, oh, do I really want to stop and like wake up and brush my teeth? I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes. But it's like I said, it's that commitment every morning that I'm like, even when this, this, like I said, the last four and a half weeks when I was really struggling to show up for myself and the business, I still did. And that's what helps recover. Like when I get to sit down at my desk, I feel like a whole new person. Mm -hmm. um, but if I'm sitting on this couch back behind me, that's the Lauren who's not showing up. So I have to like, make, I have to get to my desk every day in some capacity. <laughs> Whatever it is for you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whatever works for you. It could be something totally different. And like, I, yeah, you just have to find what works. Well, Lauren, this has been amazing. So Thank before you. we wrap all this up, any last takeaways, any last pieces of wisdom you want uh, to share on this? Um, go listen to the podcast. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Go listen to the podcast, Corporate School Dropout. Um, and, you know, maybe share your story. Maybe you hop over and there's a link on the podcast. Um, maybe you want to talk about it. Maybe you want to share what you journey you've been on. I, um, I don't discriminate that somebody's story is good or bad. I feel like everyone has something to say. And so I publish every episode. Um, because I think, like I said, you have something to say and you will resonate with others. I think the biggest part through the whole process is that not everyone is going to, um, not everyone is going to support your dream. And it's really important to, like I said, to be confident and completely fulfilled within yourself to know that your dream is worthy and that you are worthy to explore your dream. Um, Let's see, we could go all into more thoughtfulness, but I just think it's really important to know that um, not everybody's going to be supportful, supportful, supportive, um, but you can do it. You can absolutely find the community that will support you and will, you can lean into them um, and your dreams can come true. I think that a lot of people think that it doesn't and it has to be a struggle and it has to be horrible and it has to be hard. Um, there will be struggle and it will be hard, but there's so much beauty um, and so much fulfillment and so much happiness that you can experience that um, I just want to shout it from the mountaintops of um, you got it. You can do it. So. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brandy. Um, but no, I wouldn't have, I would, like I said, I wouldn't have be here without the community that you and, um, your partners created all those years ago. So I can't thank you enough for even, gosh, giving me the opportunity to speak with you again on this platform. So it is wide open for you whenever you want to come back. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> Speaking of that, so like, what, what is the future of corporate school dropout? Um, as we were talking before I left off or before we started recording, um, you know, I love that I get to bring all of these people together and whether they know it or not, we are this amazing community of um, entrepreneurs. And so I do have a private Facebook group that a lot of our speakers are in. And so I've created another way for um, people to engage. So no longer, you can also, you can listen to the podcast, but you can also hop into the private Facebook group of corporate school dropout. Mm -hmm. And I provide free uh, business training maybe I think we're probably on a once a month um, where I just pick a topic and I do a 30 minute training on, you know, something of how to start your business or some sort of business um, tips and tricks. Um, but I also bring in the guest for a live Q and a of every Wednesday. So not only do you listen to the podcast, you can also interact with our guest um, oh, wow. through, through the, through the podcast or through the Facebook group. Um, but you can also interact and build a community of like-minded people who are already there, like doing the same thing that you're doing. So um, 
like I said, listen to the podcast, but hop into our Facebook group because um, that's where you're going to get the real kind of juicy like strategy. Like how do I even get this started? That is huge. Why didn't you mention that before? Because <laughs> uh, I forget when you have like, because when, you, when you're an entrepreneur and you have all these ways of connecting, you forget like, it's, true. it's so true. <laughs> forget like from moment to moment. But when you, I also, I also feel like I want to do something more um, for the guest, whether that's like a, like a, big mastermind and bringing all the guests in to do some sort of speaking and some sort of training. Not, not every guest is a teacher. So kind of the ones who do teach and do online business, um, maybe there's a way that we can um, do something very similar to this, um, but have like, maybe it's entrepreneurs like in their fifth or sixth year of business or something. I don't know. Um, but I think that harnessing a community is the best thing that I can do and um, moving forward. I agree. Yeah, thank you. I'm, I'm <laughs> buying that ticket. <laughs> uh, I, do, I don't know. I think like shower thinking, it's um, when that creati when creativity comes, like just I, like one of our guests says, you know, you just hold on for the ride. Um, so I've been in that very like, creative mindset over the last few days of like, what else, what could be, and just start exploring what that is. So maybe I need to take a road trip and figure out what that is. I was just going to say somehow, some way, <laughs> maybe just driving around the block a few times, but yeah. I think it's time for a road trip. <laughs> I think so. Like right now it's like my weekly um, venture to the CVS for like more allergy meds, but um. I don't know. Maybe I need to drive a little further than the um, 10 minutes. See what's next. <laughs> so. Lauren, thank you so much. This was so, so lovely. And thank you. packed with good information, good wisdom. And I really appreciate you taking the time to be on here today. Oh, thank you so much. And um, I just appreciate what you've, you've been doing for the last four years. And I've thoroughly enjoyed being a part of your community and watching you grow too. Thank you. Thank All you. right, you guys, that was amazing. <laughs> I don't want this to end. <laughs> After this interview, you're going to get an email, which will have all of Lauren's contact info and how to get in touch with her, how to check out Corporate School Dropout Podcast, even join and access the Facebook group, and just everything else. I also have a list of her favorite people, which I'll include in the mid in email as well. Yes. So thank you again, Lauren. You guys stay tuned. We've got so much more. If you loved this interview, let us know, share some love, share this online, and let's just keep inspiring each other. Oh, thank you. Absolutely. All right, you guys have a great day, Lauren. I will talk to you soon. Okay. <laughs> Bye. Bye, you guys.